Oh gosh. Oh, it's all going wrong. What the heck is that? And in the words of the Spice Girls, we're gonna let two become Spice Up Your Life. Oh, <laughs> hello. Welcome to another four, three, two, one video. Uh, the video playlist in which I try and do videos of free recipes for, I'm tired. <laughs> If you're wondering why I'm tired, yesterday the clocks, no, last night the clocks went back. You spring forward and you fall back, don't you? And some countries, America, do it at different times. Last night that happened to us. 1 a.m. I woke up thinking it was 7 a.m., which was actually now 6 p. Uh, 6 a. I'm tired. I couldn't sleep. That's basically it. I, 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 I look absolutely, I feel so tired and I've just got a feeling that I might be a little bit crazy today, a little bit coffeed. I had a lot of coffee just a minute ago, sorry. If you're wondering what I did between the hours of 1 and 5.40 when I fell asleep for one hour, uh, I played a lot of Grand Theft Auto and watched some Louis Theroux. Uh, so there we go. <laughs> I'm now like a VIP on GTA. I'm like, yeah, don't get to play it much because the kids go on the telly. So yes, we are doing the 4321 playlist today. Uh, we have got some absolute stonkers and I've got to be completely honest with you, I came up with them about five minutes ago. I wasn't going to film today. I'm like, I'm so tired, but we're gonna push on and do it. I think that the ideas I've come up with are insanely good. And I really love this 4321 playlist because a lot of the people that uh, have been enjoying it, particularly are people that are just starting out cooking. There was a guy that cooked for his first date, uh, a whole 4321 video, which was amazing. And I just love the fact that you can adapt and actually get creative with the ingredients and produce some pretty good stuff. Oh, I've just realized everything's vegetarian today. You can always add meat if you want. This is a saucepan. <laughs> We're going to make the world's easiest soup. Well, it's not the easiest. Uh, it's it's just going to be a soup, and I'm not going to put any salt in it. All right. Oh my gosh. Did I do that thing when you're feeding your children and you go? Ah! I mean, I want to, but I was referencing the hacks video from the other day. All right. The cardboard is not an ingredient. Sorry, folks. Don't want to tease there. This is a tub of chopped tomatoes and it's Italian chopped tomatoes with onion and garlic added. So this is our way, if you can find so many different variations of this in the supermarket. So this is our way around adding more flavor in with just one tub. Obviously, if you just have chopped tomatoes, you can add uh, garlic and uh, onion. So we're gonna go for two of those. Nice. I went originally in to look for some kidney beans or some cannellini, cannellini, cannelloni, cannellero. <laughs> ah, sleep, uh, beans. And in oh, what the heck is that? Instead, I found uh, some mixed bean salad in a vinaigrette. So one tin, you got all these beans in there. I just wanna, I wanted to see how strong the vinaigrette was. I'm not gonna drink from the can. Cause if that's mild, that's gonna ram some extra. Oh wow, that is gorgeous. Normally it'd be in water, which is fine because we want the water in there. That's actually gonna be our extra ingredient later. You know, I'm saying water's not always an ingredient but it's fine. We might use some more if we want to sort of simmer it down loads. So from just two ingredients, I mean, we've, we, they, are, they are class ingredients for me because they're one item in the shop. They're just adding these bits in. That's what I love. <laughs> All right, Boston. This is some curly kale. Uh, it sounds like a character in a cartoon, but no, it's one of the most underrated sort of salad-y vegetables. It's a bit butch, a bit rough. I'm going to give it a wash. Yeah, straight in the bag as well. But just to show you, I mean, I think I've used this before on videos before. It's kind of like rough and furry. It takes a long time to break down, which is good because we can stick it in our soup. What are you doing over there? I'm going to grab one big handful of the kale. The rest I'm going to keep and we'll have that for tea tonight, to be honest. Mate, you're moving everywhere today. <laughs> At least you're awake. Uh, what I've done is half filled one of the tubs of uh, where the tomatoes came from with water. So I'm just going to add that in because you just you need a little bit of moisture in there. So here we go. Well, it's much more watery now, but that's fine. We just want to kind of get the kale in there. We want to try and get the balance right between not overcooking it so much that the beans fall apart, but also getting the kale tender. You could add the beans later, but I'm trying to make this super lazy. Oops. Got to be completely honest. I did just uh, lick that wooden spoon and I got a little bit of that vinaigrette taste. That's really, really nice. I've never thought of doing that before. So all I'm gonna do is stick it down here and then flame up. See that? And I'm just gonna put it on a low heat. That is our soup cooking away. Well, it's not cooking right now. 
We're gonna bring it up to a simmer and keep it on a steady simmer whilst we do lots of other things. We're gonna leave the main till last because it's best served hot that, and even though I'm gonna do my best to serve it hot, it's not gonna happen because basically I have to take pictures and stuff for Instagram and other social media. In fact, if you're not following me on Instagram or other bits, do consider following me. There's links down below if you wanna have a little look. And <laughs> I think I might have done this before on the 4321 playlist, but I literally, as I say, you're lucky. You're lucky you're getting a video today, okay? So even if three of the recipes are ones I haven't done before, then this, I don't know, I remember doing pineapple before. I think it's just the thing about me and my uh, dedication to the combination of pineapple and mint. Um, and also I fluked it, I forgot ice cubes. Uh, luckily we have some left over. So this is one of the ingredients. This is some mint leaves. I only need a few, but I'm gonna make sure I get the stalks off. Oh, it smells so good. And if you've ever grown mint fresh in your garden, make sure you do it in a little pot. Otherwise it just goes bleh. It goes, you can't stop it. It's like the Cabbage Patch film kid thing. So, so far we have got H2O. We have got fresh mint with the stalks removed and a little bit of tearage just to help our food processor. But it doesn't matter because the food processor is gonna do its job. It's gonna whiz it up anyway. Oh, and we can take, these are two pineapple rings, we'll do it for four, and also because it's in its own juice, we can add just about a tablespoon of that in there with it as well. That is gonna be blooming nice. And now like you're down there, come on mate, what are you doing? It's not breaking up my ice cubes, what's going on? Oh gosh. <laughs> Don't lean it forward, keep it on a flat surface at all times. Yeah, so I'm just gonna keep that in the fridge for now. Uh, is that like the Ninja Turtles second film? The really old school from the 90s, what the canisters they had, the ooze, was it? Yes, I am gonna use my tripod as a microphone for this one because I'm mighty proud, ladies and gentlemen, of this one. This is a chocolate orange trifle. The idea came to me in the supermarket. The actual theory is quite simple. In fact, it's not really a trifle. You've got like three classic layer. You know, you normally have the um, the base biscuit layer that's whizzed up and then you have like a filling, like a jam or a jelly, something like that, and then a cream topping. Well, I thought I don't feel like eating dust or sand today, you know, because that's what you get when you whiz up biscuits. That was what we were gonna go for the biscuit base. I did a dessert like that fairly recently and that is fine. But sometimes when you get to that, it's kind of like a bit like, I am eating a beach. You want a bit of texture there, especially with a trifle, you have sponge fingers. So I stumbled upon, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, I've kind of made a giant one in the past, Jaffa Cakes. Oh, shiver me timbers. We're gonna whiz them up because with them, you're gonna get the chocolate, you're gonna get the Jaffa orange and the sponge base in it, all on your bottom layer. Oh, and bottom layer sounded like an innuendo as I started to say that, it's fine, it's fine. Wow, these are getting smaller. <laughs> We bumped the price up and they're putting, look, there's less jelly disc in there. Why is everything getting smaller and thinner and they're charging? I don't know, let's not get onto that. Uh, but there we go. If you don't know what a Jaffa cake is, there we go. That's that sort of sponge base that I'm talking about, okay? Chocolate on top. In the middle, there is an orange flavoured jelly. I've never whizzed one up before. I normally just eat them. Mmm. Let's whiz them up though. Okay, so this is my mini food processor, and I kind of love this. It reminds me of a French student that once told me, Baby, you are a little shitter. <laughs> I'm just ripping up um, the Jaffa Cakes just to help the blades a little bit. These aren't as powerful as the other blender we used for the ice just then. I mean, you could just rip it up and stick it in the bottom like that. That would be fine. Can you tell we're making this up as we go along? Yes, a little bit. Okay, here we go. Can you whiz Jaffa Cakes? Well, yes you can. Look at that. Oh, it's like a nice mixture of crumb and, and like chunky. I'm gonna probably keep it like that actually. Because I, it's a little bit fine, but then there's also the chunks too. Oh, whiz it up fine if you want, but then you could probably go into the beachy texture again. But that is soft sponge. Yeah, so that really is pretty cool. And I've referenced it before on the channel. Uh, these aren't classed as cakes, even though they're in the biscuit aisle in the UK, because there's different taxes on there. And to prove that um, they were actually what they're supposed to be, they supersized the Jaffa cake in court. Is a, is a, you can Google it. I'm tired. In other news, I'm just taking way <laughs> the lid off of this uh, soup, just so it can simmer down a teeny weeny bit, but it's looking good. It's smelling so good. Smell it. <laughs> Smell that. Mm -mm. Okay, so Oh, I love that combination of thick 
and crumbly like that. That's nice, look at that. Does it look appetizing? No. <laughs> I'm not a supporter of Manchester United, but I heard a rumor that they have a room full of Jaffa cakes that they have at half time because they're pretty good for energy boosting and stuff. Well, it's just sugar in it, but there we go. I'm loving this. So we've got a nice chocolate spongy jelly base. Now, um, when I was a baby, my favorite baby food, my mum told me, was chocolate pudding. So I was trying to find that. I actually legitimately looked for chocolate pudding in the baby aisle. It was really expensive. So instead, I got some chocolate custard, which was on offer. So that's gonna be our middle layer. And of course, if we wanted to, we could like mix in Jaffa cakes with this, but I'm just, oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> and all good trifles need to be topped with a thick clotted cream. Ah. <laughs> oh. I don't know if you guys remember, I actually did a video on how to make your own homemade clotted cream. Spoiler alert, just use your oven for hours. Look at that. Oh, that is so naughty. If I had a few more ingredients, like you could grate chocolate on and stuff like that, but no, we must let it stay true to its Jaffa cake roots and we will just push a Jaffa cake on like that. <laughs> oh, this is my eye patch. I'm a pirate and I approve of this pudding. Three ingredients. <laughs> wow, that's blooming cool. I bet it tastes great. Oh, I'll put it in the fridge. I'm not even gonna hide it because this is the sort of guy I am today. I was just like, <laughs> I've got like little munchies. I just drunk some of the custard out of the tub and there you go. It's good. I'm gonna tell you something else that'll be good is uh, mixing this together. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry I need this today. This last recipe kind of goes back to the last video I did where I kind of let myself go a little bit. Not, oh my gosh, like that. Uh, but uh, I kind of sort of allowed myself like seasoning and things like that. And I really, really want to add so much more to this. But this is going to be, uh, what pasta was it? Hang on. <laughs> I wanted fettuccine because I believe that's what the original recipe was for. But we're going to use tagliatelle, fresh egg pasta. <laughs> nice, cooks very quick, very good. We're gonna do a tagliatelle Alfredo, and I think Alfredo was invented by a guy called Alfredo, and it's something to do about cream, parmesan and butter, emulsifying and making a gorgeous sauce, so gorgeous sauce. Oh. I was gonna try and skirt around it by not using the butter, but we only need a teeny weeny bit. So if you don't mind, I think butter, everything, everything, <laughs> everything should be covered in butter, even you. Um, you know, give, cut me some slack. This is what a small frying pan looks like. This is what a pot of 300 mils of cream, guesstimated about 200 mils, looks like. This is what 50... Oh no. Oh, you looked it upside down. I left the wrapper on. Whoops. That's what 50 grams of butter looks like. And this is what 50 grams of Parmesan looks like. I'm just going to use some scissors and snip it off. I don't know why I'm doing that. Oh, damn it. Boston, your tongue was so far out then, it was longer than your tail. It was like, ah, oh, I was about to go. And this is what a pug with a big tongue looks like. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is what a simmered down soup looks like. If I uh, let that cool down now, it might look watery, but once it actually does cool down, once you take it off the heat, it's deceptive. It can thicken up a little bit. So I would say that it's pretty much ready now. Wrong one. That is what a pan of water looks like that's coming up to boil to cook the pasta, which isn't fettuccine. What we will do is take this pan of butter, cream and cheese. Wow, all the fats, get it going. There we go, look, oh, look at that, the buttery stream. Ah, oh, breaking it down. That looks really naughty now, doesn't it? So maybe I should have grated that Parmesan to be honest, but it should eventually give way. You'll notice I've moved the soup away to give myself more time to sort of, well, not burn myself and make sure I can get the pasta ready. But other than that, just concentrate on this for the minute. Enjoy the process. Enjoy it. Look. Wah, wah, wah. DJ pasta sauce. Waka, 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 fresh. Oh, there we go. I left it for about a minute and look at that. It's picked up the simmer really quickly. It's all broken down and there was a bit of a skin forming. So I would suggest that we do keep this stirring over a low heat actually. And I really, really think I will season this just to show you what it looks like because the pasta is pretty much the same color as the sauce. <laughs> All right, what I've done is just taken that off the heat, but obviously the hob is still gonna be hot in that area from it. So I will stir it from time to time, but my water is just about to boil over there. Oh, that is hot. I'm gonna put it onto the smaller hob just so it's close to me, got a bit more control, and you can't see very well. There we go, that's a bit better. 
fresh pasta in my hand. I'm gonna plunge that right in there and that's gonna cook in about two minutes. It's so good. I know you guys aren't gonna really wanna know my pasta preferences, but it wasn't until I started doing my YouTube channel that I realized that fresh pasta existed. Like this stuff is ready, like I say, in two minutes. It is super stonking. So I went through this phase initially on the channel, you could go back and watch it, of dried pasta all the time, which is fine. And then I discovered that, was, this is life changing. Then I learned how to make my own, which if you can make the time and the effort, you can do different colored ones with spinach, you can do green pasta, that is really fun. It's like edible Play-Doh, but, for normal pasta, I've actually diverted back to the dry stuff. Yeah, that's my pasta talk. Well, I kind of dumped it in so it's a little bit untidy, but just like that, our pasta is done. This is where he jumps in and he goes, hey, that's my line. For those of you that don't have any idea of what I'm talking about with that little action figure man of a chef, his name is Chef Aldonte. It's a gadget that actually tells you when your pasta's cooked. It shouts, pasta don, but it sings. It's pretty good. So I'm gonna just drain this pasta off now. Probably two-handed. All right, so I've left about a tablespoon of the water in there just to keep it a teeny bit moist. I got the heat up on this thing as well, just to warm it through. See that skin? Yes, we're gonna stir that through. We're just gonna warm this up just a trickle for about a minute. And in the words of the Spice Girls, we're gonna let two become spice up your life. All right, in that goes. Oh my gosh, yes. Now I'm using a spatula here, but oh, I'm trying to do it one-handed and I'm moving the pan. Not good, not good. Oh, it's all going wrong. Gosh, yeah. Amy, learn how to use a tripod, mate, will you? Right, we need to get this sauce in and coating that pasta as soon as possible. We don't want it to cool down. <gasps> I love how that's clinging and hugging it. <laughs> Through that whole scene, the hob was on one of the things. I very nearly just burnt my arm. Get some help. That was a note to self. So what I'm gonna do is get oh, some tongs and just pile that pasta up. Oh my gosh. The smell is phenomenal. And that sauce is just so simple and glossy. That is a lot of pasta. <laughs> Let's get rid of some of it. I don't know if any Italian man ever says that's too much pasta. That looks really boring. But what we can do is grate on some Parmesan, like that. Or Grana Padano. And I'm gonna do it, I don't care. I wanna show some contrast to colors here. There's a little bit of pepper on top. But you could put salmon in there, chicken, anything you want. This might steam up the lens, but I'm just gonna push in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the soup. I made a little bit of a mess pouring that in there, but look, I made, it smells so good. From the fridge, I've just got my Jaffa cake trifle and this glass, and I really do again hope <laughs> I've got enough uh, because I'm giving it another shake. It will probably settle if you leave it too long. <laughs> this is our pineapple and mint juice. Oh, it's still a little ice cube in there. Oh, I love the colour. I don't think I've done this. And I'm just going to put a little sprig of mint in the top. Ah, <laughs> oh, we did it. We did it. Okay, so let's taste it. But before we do, Boston has finally succumbed to the temptation of his bed, which is probably where I will be uh, later on this afternoon. I'm gonna fight it, but it's gonna happen, isn't it? It's gonna happen. But I can't believe, seriously, when I was up about sort of seven o'clock walking the dogs thinking, yeah, it's gonna be a struggle today. I don't think I was gonna film, but we did it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already or know someone that should be subscribed, do tell them about the channel. It'd be much appreciated. Oh, this smells so fresh. Mmm. Oh, wow. I don't think I've made something like that before. It's kind of like a semi-skimmed pina colada. It's got the real sort of nice uh, slush puppy texture, you know, like a whizzed up icy drink because the ice has kind of crumbed in there and by keeping it cool, it's maintained that texture. Nice. The soup, which remember, the tin tomatoes had, no, the beans had vinaigrette in it. The tin tomatoes had garlic and onion, didn't they? It smells so good. Oh, wow. The best thing about it, the beans are still intact. You've got sweet corn in there as well, nice. The kale has softened, amazing, super flavor packed. A real winter warmer, especially with the clocks going back. Don't know if I mentioned that. This has gone a teeny bit cold. You do want to eat it straight away. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit granular. Yeah. That is... Ooh, that is nice. I was trying to say, you've got to eat it like you've got a Santa Claus beard. That is, that is so good. Uh, a bit of chicken with that, like say salmon. Oh yeah, baby, but on its own like that, it's fine. Garlic bread. 
This is what I'm really hoping for. I'm going to scoot right down here, try and get, oh, have I got some? Yes. So we haven't got sand this time. We've got pudding, we've got cream and whiz duck Jaffa with the orange as well in there. Yep. I'm suddenly now awake. <laughs> oh, the textures, the thickness of the cream, because it's a little thicker, it's kind of like the thing that holds it all together. You've got the softness, the delicateness of the chocolate and then that texture. The, the grittiness, the spongelessness, and the jelliness, and the chocolateiness of the Jaffa in there, all working together. I probably would grate some sort of more orange zest on top if we had that chance to, but that, 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 that is, is nice. It's really, really nice. Oh my God. Remember, the theory of these recipes can be mixed up, and it was only what I saw on the shelf. I was gonna just get biscuits, but I was like, no, Jaffa's. Just make it, and mix it, and personalize it to your own. If you try any recipes or any video I've ever done, please share on social media with me. I love to see your attempts. It's great. It's good to know that I, I, I inspire. Goodbye. I'm going to bed now. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 